Welcome back to my channel. Um, oh my gosh, my water, excuse me guys. It is a uh, Friday night and I'm filming my intro. Actually, it's officially Saturday morning, which means that it's last night. This is hard to grasp. Um, for all of you asking, yes, I did cut my weave. Okay, fine, nobody's asking. Literally, I'm recording in the garage by myself, but yes, I did cut my hair. Okay, I'm gonna get serious now. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is very special because I am surprising two of my sweet followers. Um, everybody thinks that they're just coming to watch me uh, make keychains. And they think that this is all they're gonna learn today, how to make these amazing, fun keychains. It says baddie. It's got a little glitter. I mean, how, y'all? So everybody thinks that they're just coming to learn how to make keychains, but I decided to do something special for two of my sweet, sweet baddie followers. As you guys know, I have my own um, apparel line. I have a, I have my merch, of course, but I also have um, a crafter clothing line that I started. Let me try to not make this too long. So basically, um, Felicia, by Felicia, she's one of my friends, um, she, you know, back in, I believe, December, the beginning of December, end of November, um, she was wearing baddie apparel every day and posting it on her stories. And she just kind of made it this little thing. She was like, okay, day one, day two, day three. And so, yeah, she just, I think she was like on day 11 or something. And other baddies started to join in on her and like start, they started wearing baddie apparel and tagging and saying day one, day two. And so she was like, dude, we should make it a challenge. What do you think? Um, anyway, I was like, oh my gosh, that would be a really good idea. If for wins, I could give them a gift card, you know? Um, I do wanna reiterate just because I feel like sometimes um, things can be misconstrued or just miscommunication. Um, I did not tell my followers that whoever wore the most baddie apparel and posted it on social media was gonna win something. Um, they started doing this on their own, um, which I think is so freaking sweet. Anyway, long story short, um, basically the rule was you had to wear baddie apparel every day, you could not repeat an apparel item, and you can skip a day. Um, and whoever went the longest was gonna win a gift card. So um, the months went on, or the weeks went on, and the girls were staying strong, of course, as some of them started to run out of items to wear, you know, they started falling, you know, dropping out. And right now, I believe we're on day 33, which tomorrow will be day, to, technically today is 34. Okay. Um, anyway, I have two, two baddies um, that are going strong. Um, yesterday I checked and they were both on day 32 straight of wearing baddie apparel every day. And I thought to myself, that's unheard of. I, first of all, they, they want to do it. They're, they're doing it because they want to, but number, number two, like for somebody to want to wear your stuff that much and for them to be that passionate 32 days, some people can't even go to the gym for 32 days. I can't even do like keep a habit for 32 days. So I was just like, wow, that is that is crazy. Like I wanted to do something nice for them. So what I decided to do is, as you guys know, my schedule is super tight. It's really hard for me. Um, I don't do custom orders because I don't have time and I don't sell my cups very often. Actually, I don't sell my cups at all. Um, I either keep them or I give them away. And so um, I decided to do something special for them and I couldn't I couldn't pick just one. They're both on day 32 and that is insane. So I decided to custom make them tumblers. And I actually just pulled these off the turner so I haven't even put lids on them or anything. You guys know this is the ghetto version of a YouTube, but here it is. I'm trying to make sure you can see. Ah. I basically did alcohol ink and I put their name. So this one is for Rose my sweet rosemary and I wanted to make the same thing but different color this one is for my sweet Leonor so um, basically they get matching cups but just in different colors 
Um, I'm obsessed with them. I love them. I wish I had put my name on them, but it's okay. They deserve it. It's going to go to them. Um, so girls, this is just my way of saying thank you so much for being here, for supporting me, for being so loving and for loving not only me, but my apparel enough to go 32 days straight. I have no words. I love I love my baddies. My baddies are the heart of my business. And when you think about Myra Makes It, you think baddies. You don't just think Myra Makes It like we are one, right? Like, And so I just wanted to say that I'm very grateful to think back to June when I released my merch and I was terrified. Um, and my journey for the past six months and all of the obstacles I have faced and everything that I've gone through and all of the work, the long hours, sacrificing weekends, packing orders. It's just to see people loving it that much. And I, it's just unexplainable. I, I feel very thankful. So this is for you guys. Um, I'm very, I made these with a lot of love. I made these with a lot of love and I hope that you guys love them and I'm going to end my intro because I feel like I'm going to cry. I can feel tears. Um, I'm very thankful. I love you guys very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me and I hope you enjoy the video. I will have a tutorial at the end um, on the keychains. The first part of the tutorial is how to make these tumblers and the second part is how to make the keychains um so i don't you know it's probably going to be a little bit long but it's going to be worth it because you're going to walk away learning two new skills i will link everything in the description for you guys okay thank you so much besitos for this tutorial we are going to need some cheap makeup sponges you can get them at dollar tree walmart family dollar you're also going to need some alcohol inks the co the color of your choice um, i've had these ones for a while they are from ccdiy i will link all of the colors that i used and what i like to do to blend my alcohol inks with the makeup sponges i like to cut the sharp edges or the like square edges and kind of round them out a little bit give them a little bit of texture because whenever you blend it, blend out the alcohol ink on the cup, you it they won't look like stamps. It won't look like a square stamp or a rectangle stamp, right? You'll have more texture. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's just what I'm doing here. And then once I have these completely cut, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which is going to be to actually apply the alcohol inks to our tumbler. And for that, you're going to need one prepped tumbler spray painted white. I do not recommend using prime time. Uh, on a tumbler for this method just because in order for the alcohol inks to truly truly get that like awesome effect um, in my personal opinion it works best on a glossy surface so I did glossy white spray paint okay so what I started doing originally was putting little drops of the alcohol ink directly on the tumbler but I quickly realized that I didn't like this method just because Obviously, you don't want to accidentally put a little too much alcohol ink and then have it drip down the side of the cup because it's going to spray, it's going to stain the white spray paint. And I really wanted to keep my colors um, separate. So I decided to go ahead and just pour the alcohol ink into a little medicine cup and then started to just kind of dip it inside of there and then dab it on the cup okay sorry um anyway you're just gonna dip it like you dip your chipotle chip in your chipotle cheese okay i'm sorry i really want to be serious guys i want to be serious okay um all right so here you see me doing the pour okay now guys Alcohol inks are so much fun. There is a little method to their mat. No method, not method to their mat. There's a little trick. Tr I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but there is, they need to be finessed. There we go. Look at me. They need to be fin. Oh no. What does finesse mean? I need to, know I need to stop using words that I don't even actually know the definition. English is hard. I barely know how to speak Spanish. You think I'm going to learn a second language? Psh I can't speak good English or good Spanish. I'm stuck. I suck both ways. Okay, sorry. 
back, back to the tutorial. So don't be too hard on yourself, okay? Like we are going to activate this alcohol ink and with um, some 90, with some 99, what is happening? With some 99% alcohol and it's going to create this beautiful effect. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do it. I call this the dab and blow. <laughs> Guys, I'm talking about the tutorial, okay? So once you have your color on exactly how you want it, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you follow the swirl pattern. Um, and I know that right now it looks super red and super bright. And obviously like the edges where the color ends are super sharp, like boom, it goes from red to white. Don't worry, we're gonna blend those out, okay? And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna blend those out. We're gonna take a paintbrush, okay? a dry paintbrush and we're gonna dip it into alcohol, just pure 99% alcohol and make sure you dab the excess off. Do not put too much alcohol on the cup or else it's gonna run and it's not gonna be pretty. So as you can see, I'm just dabbing and I'm blowing. Da 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 dab, da 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 dab, blow. And the reason I'm blowing is because when I blow, that's what's causing that really good effect. Ooh, Jenny's here with my McDonald's. Be right back. Sorry about that, guys. I've been a busy little bee today, and I had been neglecting my meals. So huh, I really needed that McDonald's. Okay, back to work. Da -da 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 -da. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you um, dab all the excess alcohol ink off and just kind of very gently tap and then blow. Okay, you want to be you want to be able to kind of make that a um, little bit of alcohol kind of spread out and it causes like this watercolor effect over your alcohol ink and it also creates these really beautiful cells and you can kind of just go back and forth and do that as much as you want. As you can see, I am constantly going back and dabbing that brush on that paper towel to wipe that alcohol off. If you feel like the color is too dark, you can dab some alcohol and quickly like pick up some of that extra alcohol ink with the paper towel. What you see me doing here is just very carefully putting a little bit of alcohol in that line that separates the light pink from the red. And this is just to kind of blend it together. Guys, you literally could sit here and do this as much or as little as you want until you got the effect that you want. There is no right or wrong way. These are alcohol inks. Not every tumbler is going to be the same, and you just want to keep doing it until you get the effect that you are looking for. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit longer, and then I'm going to go ahead and continue to add the rest of the colors, and then we're going to blend it all together. I can't wait to see if you guys recreate this, even if you do it in your own way or you use totally different colors. Alcohol inks are so much fun, and the amount of things that you can do with them are endless. I truly miss working with alcohol inks when I first started. It was one of the first things that I started messing around with. Um, and I just, I, I forgot how much I loved them. So I'm definitely going to be having lots of um, tutorials coming up in the near future with some more alcohol ink techniques. But this one right here has got to be my favorite at the moment. Just look at it. It's so pretty. We're going to go ahead and carefully continue to da -da 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 dab, da -da 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 dab and blow and I can't wait for you to see how this is going to activate and spread out. I think this is going to be your new obsession. And if you feel like you added a little bit too much alcohol ink to one section and if you feel like it's a little bit too dark, um, you can go ahead and do what I'm doing here. I was just adding some alcohol and dabbing off the excess with a paper towel. Nothing is permanent, you guys. Not even tattoos. Even tattoos are removable now. Ooh, wait a second. Herpes is permanent. Okay, never mind. Some stuff is permanent. But listen, not alcohol inks, okay? We can mess with them as much as we want to. So as you can see, like as I have added more and more alcohol and kind of dabbed it and blown on the cup, I'm starting to create these really beautiful cells and this really beautiful effect. Now, if you're looking for that really super pastel, light uh, watercolor look, then you wanna make sure that you use very little alcohol ink. And then you're just going to spread it out by using the same method that I'm using right now, um, except there's going to be a lot way less ink on the tumbler. And then it's going to like spread out and get even more pastel and just super watercolory and beautiful. If you guys want to, I can do another tutorial on a watercolor design. Just let me know in the comments if you're interested. 
And also, you guys, please don't be too hard on yourself if you feel like you, this is not turning out how you want it. I don't even want to admit how much time I actually spent dabbing alcohol ink on this. I mean, dabbing alcohol with my paintbrush, moving it around, blowing. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. When you dab that alcohol in there, go ahead and blow and just let it activate. Let it get to where you want it to be. It's when the, it's when you start blowing on it that you start to really see that alcohol ink move around and cause like this really cool effect. Um, so I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to make. Now, this is the same process for the whole tumbler. Okay, you guys, basically the entire time I was kind of making sure all the colors look like they were blending together. And obviously you don't want to contaminate too much. You do want it to be very obvious that they're different colors. So you don't want to just use the same brush over the whole thing without wiping it. So every single time I switched from super dark to super light, I always made sure I dabbed off that extra ink so that my brush was clean before moving on to the next color. And you're basically gonna repeat this around the entire tumbler until you feel like your alcohol inks are perfectly blended and until you feel like you are 100% happy with the end result. Now, I'm only gonna show you the process for this tumbler. I did make both tumblers, but I used the exact same method. So to avoid this video being six hours long, I am just gonna show you how I did this one and show you the end result of both. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next part of the tutorial, which is what we're gonna do after you've perfectly blended your inks and after they've 100% dried. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So this is what I ended up with. I am super happy with how the colors blended and how all the different cells look. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next part. We're gonna create our own stencil and we're, I'm gonna teach you a technique that I use to distress my tumblers. I actually just did a very detailed live in my Patreon group this past week on how to do really beautiful distressing on tumblers. And I've been using this technique for a pretty, a pretty long time now. And I'm just, I'm obsessed with it. Like there is no, there is nothing like it. It's just my favorite way to add a little bit of texture to tumblers and I'm gonna show you guys, okay? So basically we're gonna use the tools that are already in Design Space. So we're just gonna grab a um, rectangle shape, I, whatever the edges are curved. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the color of it so that I can kind of see the placement of the hearts. And like I said, the heart is a shape that's already available in Design Space. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna size it, right? To whatever size I want the heart to be. I'm going to highlight both the heart and the rectangle, and then I am going to click the slice tool at the bottom. And what that's going to do is that's going to cut a heart shape out of that rectangle. And what I am going to continue to do is I'm going to continue to place those hearts in whatever pattern or shape I want them to be in. And I'm going to size them differently. And what I'm doing is I am creating my own stencil, right? So if there's a specific shape or something really cool that you want to do, um, you can just quickly make yourself a stencil. It's super easy. I just used cardstock paper that I have from Joanne and I cut this out of cardstock and I used it as my stencil. This is such an amazing technique because you know, whenever you make a tumbler and you put decals on it, it's beautiful. But sometimes you're like, okay, like, you know, uh, for example, I'm going to put little hearts on these tumblers, right? If I would have just done regular vinyl, you would have been like, okay, yeah, that's cute. Like heart, you know, vinyl hearts. But because I did the hearts using my distressing technique, it almost feels like you don't even know how the hearts were placed there or why you can kind of see through them or why they blend so perfectly into the tumbler. So I swear by this technique, like 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, like I mentioned before, I did do a detailed live in my Patreon this past week on distressing and I taught more techniques than just the stencil one that I'm about to show you guys. So if you guys are interested, enrollment for my Patreon group opens back up again in February. And I think that in the next couple of months, we are going to completely fill the group to capacity and I am going to have to permanently close it because I do have a limit of people that I'm going to allow in just to make sure that I am still 
taking really good care of everybody. So if it's something that you've been considering, do not sleep on it because once I close it, once it's 100% full, um, it's going to stay closed. And we're learning a lot of really good stuff in there. Just tonight, my best friend Morgan, who's a logo designer, um, she did a detailed hour and a half live with all of us and taught us the basics of Procreate and how to design a really amazing decal. And it was easy to follow. She was super helpful and we all created our own decal. So uh, my Patreon is more than just tumblers. It's, it's teaching you a whole bunch of skills that are just going to help you be a better creative, you know, in general. Anyway, okay, moving right along. So once you've completed your design and it's exactly how you like it, you're going to go ahead and cut it out of cardstock. So I always cut my cardstock just on the cardstock setting and it always cuts really good for me but if you have issues with that setting you could always turn it up one notch um, all right let's create a stencil we are going to use this gold arteza um, metallic paint i got it from amazon but you can get gold paint from anywhere uh, but i will link this one in the description so what you're going to do is you're going to use that exact same sponge, the, the same makeup sponges, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to cut the harsh edges off, and then you're just going to lay your stencil on the tumbler, and you're going to have to really hold it in place so that you don't smear anything. And you want to make sure that you take that acrylic paint and dab off any excess because you don't want the sponge to be too wet. If it is, if it has too much acrylic paint in it, the acrylic will kind of get under that cardstock and you're going to lose the shape of the hearts. So you just want to make sure you do thin coats um, because they dry super fast. And if you do like three or four coats, you'll get a nice uh, like gold tint uh, without compromising the shape of the hearts. Now to answer any questions, I do not seal my alcohol inks. Um, I've never had them bleed under epoxy or run or any of that. I always let my um tumblers dry for no less than two hours when it's alcohol inks before i ever move on to anything else and i've never had an issue um anytime i have tried to seal them that's where when i've had issues i've tried lots of different sealers lots of different sprays um and anytime i put anything over that alcohol ink that's when it kind of disturbs it so i have learned that if you just let it dry long enough you do not have to seal them I've always done it this way, and once you see the final product, you'll see that I did not have any sort of smearing or any sort of issues whatsoever, uh, but I did make sure I allowed it to dry for a good two hours before I even went back and touched it. Um, if you feel more comfortable sealing it, um, I do not have a sealer that I could recommend because I have none of them have worked for me, um, but you could use whatever sealer it is that you use if you just want to be safe, uh, but I do feel that they do not need to be sealed if you let them dry enough for enough time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue to do thin coats of this um, gold paint. And then once I feel like I have, you know, enough of that color on there, I'm gonna carefully lift up the stencil to reveal, you know, the pattern underneath. Now remember, the point is to kind of let your um, shapes be a little translucent so that they blend into the background perfectly and people have no idea how you even got those hearts on there. Whenever it's time to remove the stencil, just do it very carefully. Look how pretty that looks. Make sure you let the acrylic paint fully dry to the touch before you move on to do any more stenciling. I did not seal the acrylic paint. I just let it fully dry and then I moved on. There is nothing on this tumbler that I sealed before epoxying. Um, I just let everything dr fully dry in between steps and then I went ahead and epoxied and I didn't have any issues. Okay, so here's what it looks like under the first coat of epoxy. I think it looks so amazing. What I'm going to do now is I am going to put my name decal. And I also cut just a few accent hearts out of gold vinyl. And I'm just going to place them sporadically, like just a few here and there. Not to add too much. And then I took a tiny little bit of UV resin, a very thin coat, and applied it in certain sections. And then I sprinkled a little bit of chunky gold um, just very little here and there. After I finished curing the UV resin, I added my final coat of epoxy to both tumblers. I did 40 mLs 
over the alcohol ink and 40 mls over the decals and that was more than enough to get full coverage and to completely have everything fully covered and beautiful i hope you enjoyed watching me make these tutorials i had so much fun i think the cups are so beautiful i hope the girls love them and if you want to learn how to make a keychain stick around we're going to cruise through it so to make these keychains you're kind of going to need a lot of stuff so i think what i'm going to do instead of linking every single thing that i bought at hobby lobby um, I found you guys a jewelry making kit on Amazon for only $49 that has like 90% of this stuff. And obviously it doesn't have the actual like keychain little rings, which I'll also add to the description, but it's going to be a lot cheaper for you to just buy that kit and use what's in there and then add a few things um, than for you to buy everything individually like I did. I do want to tell you that making jewelry is pretty much the same thing as the way I made these keychains. So even if you do get that jewelry making kit, you are going to apply the same methods to make earrings and stuff like that. But it has a lot of the tools that you need for a lot cheaper. So that's why I decided to go that route for you guys. I went crazy and bought way too much stuff that I did not need. And I don't know how I'm going to financially recover from this, but it's okay. My husband doesn't have to know <gasps> unless he watches this. Ooh, hee hee, oh well. Okay guys, let's move right along. I found these tiny little glitter containers. They have actual glitter inside of them. I got it at Hobby Lobby for $15.99 and they come with like a little loop so you could put them on keychains, bracelets, or necklaces. I had to have them. And I cut this little tiny itty bitty piece of silicone and I use it whenever I don't have like a lot of stuff that I'm working on. In this case, I'm working on lots of keychains, so I decided to get a bigger silicone mat. You're gonna need all of these little tweezers and wire cutters, but those will come in the kit that I am gonna link. And of course, we're gonna need a little silicone pencil thingy. You can get those on Amazon. I will also link them. You're gonna need, I would not use a torch, but a torch is all I had. I would use one of those long stem thingy, lighter thingies, and um, alcohol rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle and of course uv resin and a uv lamp we're going to go ahead and move right along what we're going to do is we're going to grab a medicine cup and we're going to pour some epoxy one drop of alcohol ink to give it some color and just a little bit of glitter and that's how we're going to create our first heart molds okay you want to use a very small amount because we don't want to waste any uv resin and so I'm just adding a tiny little bit of UV resin and then I'm going to add a drop of alcohol ink and just a little bit of glitter and it is going to create the most beautiful little mix. Just wait until you see it. I wanted to make sure that I only did one tiny drop of alcohol ink and just a tiny little bit of glitter because I didn't want to disturb the UV resin too much and prevent it from fully curing. So I just did a little bit and now I'm taking a popsicle stick and just kind of helping me get that UV resin into the molds. I'm trying to be as careful as I can, but I'm a very messy crafter. But this is where that little tool comes in, my little um, silicone tip pen or pencil, whatever you want to call it. Um, they have them on Amazon. I'll link them. They're amazing for UV resin art because you can just wipe the UV resin right off the silicone. It's never going to stick to it. And it's got a precision, precision tip, precision. Um, I don't like using a torch, you guys, but I don't have one of those regular lighters. So I had to use a torch, but I would not recommend a torch. I would definitely use either just alcohol spray or use more of a lighter. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our um, tools that come with, uh, they're going to come with the set of jewelry that I am going to link in the description. And you're gonna take those little loops and all you have to do is hold one with your pliers and then use your other set of pliers to kind of twist it open. And then you're just gonna kind of add your little things to it, right? So first we're gonna add that little heart and then we're gonna take that um, stretchable string that we, got at the, that we got at Hobby Lobby and we're gonna put beads through it. Now you could do however many beads you want. I decided to do a few rhinestone and then a few clear. Now this piece right here, what you do with it is you hold it open. It's a little bit hard because it's so tiny and you put the 
clear string in the middle and then you take your pliers and you fold down each flap and press it tightly and then you cut the excess um plastic off and that's what it should end up looking like and now you can add a little loop to either side so we can add our keychain and our mold and boom there's already part of our keychain and we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing to this we're going to add one of those tiny little silver loops we're going to apply it the way i just showed you using your tools and then we're also going to create another little like um, beaded string for it and you're going to repeat the exact same process you're going to use those little ends with the flap you're going to press down with them with the pliers um, make them lay super flat so that they hold on to that plastic and then with that little metal that you're attaching to the ends it has a little hole that's where you're going to put the little rings through and the rings are what you use to connect everything I promise you guys it's not as hard as it seems. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me. This keychain was super easy to make and I'm gonna link every single thing that you guys need. Um, I'm sorry that I didn't make the keychain part more detailed. I didn't wanna make this a one hour tutorial, um, but I do wanna show you one more cool thing. So this is actually um, resin tape, epoxy tape, and basically you could use this for your resin art and it's super easy to peel off. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this little, um, it's not a pendant, but this little like uh, mold thingy. You, you get these at Hobby Lobby, but I'm going to link them because they have them on Amazon too. And these are designed for you to make UV resin jewelry. In this case, we're using it for keychains. So once I put it on top of that tape, I take a little bit of alcohol spray and I spray it. Then I add UV resin, spray it again, and then I put it under the UV light. This helps pop the bubbles so that you can have that crystal clear resin. And what that's gonna be our first layer. After that, I'm gonna take these teeny tiny little dried up flowers that I got in the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby. We'll also link this from my Amazon store. And I'm just kind of placing them in little different areas where I think they're gonna look pretty. And once you have your little flowers of your choice placed, you're going to repeat the process. You're going to do a thin coat of UV resin. Then you're going to go ahead and spray it with that 99% alcohol one more time. You're going to cure it under your UV light. And then you're going to repeat the same process to create those beaded, those beaded chains. You can use whatever beads you want, whatever sizes you want. Um, you could buy whatever accessories you want to add to it. And you end up with all of these beautiful keychains, all of these beautiful combinations. Please let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial and leave me any questions in the comments below. I always do my best to answer as many comments as I can, but I definitely do try to come back and look at your guys' questions. Um, this is the first keychain that I made this week when I started experimenting with this. Um, it's got a lot of uh, imperfections but I feel like my keychains got a little bit better as I continue to practice and the same thing will happen with you don't forget it's crafting crafting is supposed to be fun don't put too much pressure on yourself until next time besitos